Hey, Paul, how's it going? <laughs> it's going it's going great, Chris. I am uh, I am thrilled to be here. I'm happy that we're kicking this off. Oh, hey, man. You know, uh, you know the first time I, I, I ever met you, I thought, you know, that is a Power BI brother of mine. I, I am I'm super excited that we get to, you know, uh, get together and talk Power BI. Uh, I'm looking forward to this. It's so am I. Brothers from a different mother. We went to different high schools together. Uh, I think I think it was just natural that we we put this together and talk about this tool that we love so much. Heck yeah, man! I, I'm pumped. All right. All right. Let's dive in. Great. So, where do we start? We both been working in IT and business intelligence for a long time. What's our think, number one priority? I uh, I think it's probably our 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 users. It's the business users that need value out of data. So how do we how, how do we how do we focus on that? I mean, you know, we know how to do you know this data ingestion and modeling and using DAX to do cool calculations and cool visuals. But I mean, what what's it really all about? And I, I, I think that's the consumer. I think that's the business people who need to take action on this data. I, I completely agree. In fact, I think that's that's the primary thing that business intelligence has gotten right from the beginning is it's always been consumer focused. It's not necessarily been focused on the tech or the back end or the en yeah, engines. That's been part of it. But it's been focused on delivering actionable insights with people. And, you know, yeah, you have to know the people that you're working with in order to do so, right? And I like to think yep. of, you, you know, you, you can meet individually, right? Like you're Paul, I'm Chris, you know, uh, all that stuff's all good. But I like to think of people inside of like personas, right? Like an executive or a salesperson or something along those lines. Does, does that make sense to you, Paul? It, it makes perfect sense to me. You know what also makes sense? What doesn't make sense is wearing polarized sunglasses and trying to read a computer monitor. I agree I, completely. I, I, see, I see you, my friend, right there in front of me, but you're completely out of focus. So we're going to have to switch this up. And oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I see you now. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. So. So, so that makes sense because because I'm an old guy and I need glasses to be able to read. Um, but I, you know, I one one of my favorite all time books that I, I grew up with was um, the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Mm. And the first habit that Stephen Covey talks about is begin with the end in mind. Mm. And I think that the end of the BI journey is getting value in front of users. And to your point, personas, understanding the audience, understanding who those people are, that helps us figure out how to deliver actionable insights and information. So let's break that down. Let's talk about who these people are who who need reporting and analytics. Yeah, I, I, I agree completely, Paul. Let's talk about Ellen the executive, all right? So, Ellen the executive. So here we have Ellen the executive. What do we know about Ellen? I, you know, if, if Ellen's running a company, I, I think she's on a tight deadline. I think she needs she needs answers to important questions quickly. Yep. I think it's probably the first thing is Ellen needs the most important information in front of her right now. Uh, I agree. And I think you're going to find that Ellen is really performance and goal oriented, right? Where is she? Okay. Where is the company tracking towards the goals that they've set um, for themselves, that they've commuted to sh communicated to shareholders. Um, where where are they doing? How are, how are they coming at with these things, right? So, you know, I, I, a, uh, a, a concept that I think has been popularized in business intelligence at, at, at large is this idea of a key performance indicator, this mm. idea that, you know, Ellen, uh, you know, running her company, um, they're driving toward a goal. So they've got targets. Maybe they've got plans. They've, they've got, uh, uh, you know, goals of some kind that have been defined. Maybe it's just the numbers from last year. It might be something that a planner came up with. But they've got goals. 
and then they need to know what the actual values are to measure against those goals. So you've got this concept of this KPI or key performance indicator, which really says, hey, you know, red, yellow, green, where are we? So I can draw attention to things that are not on target, but, you know, those things that we're, we're being good at, how do we continue to be good at that? Right. And so, you know, and I, I think I that's think, an important concept. I think they're also often looking for firefighting issues too, right? Like, are there, what are the biggest problems that your organization is facing and how can she, you know, make sure that the people who are responsible for taking care of them are taking care of them, what the, what their next action, what their action plan is to address those issues, those types of high level uh, issues that are being resolved, right? Are being addressed, right? How, how does, how does a business executive like, like Ellen take action? So, you know, let's say she's looking at this dashboard style report that, that, that you know, has these important numbers and these KPIs on it. Um, what does she do with that? And how do we enable her to take action? Well, that's a, that's a great point. A lot of executives, like they have really the entire company at their disposal to execute on plans to address issues, right? So Ellen's reaching out to her, you know, her chain of command and she's, you know, delegating authority and she's, she's contacting and working with them or she's asking an analyst or finding people to do that dig in and do some research on. So um, right. El Ellen's not going to be. Ellen has people. Ellen has people. Right. She can, she can delegate. She can say, Hey, this thing's on fire. It's red. Yep. We're missing our target. Go take care of that. Yep. Yeah. That, that, that's exactly right. Ellen, unlike lots of other people in the organization is all about the delegation. Right. And, mm -hmm. You know, helping her be able to understand what needs to be done and who needs to be, you know, things to be, need to be delegated to is really key, right? So I don't think Ellen is the person who, in many cases, is going to be going in and trying to build a report, right? Ellen's going to want right. that content heavily curated. Uh, she's going to want to make sure that all the VPs and directors underneath her you know, understand the numbers that she can connect with and talk to. And, and um, uh, you know, they're the ones that, and the people that she has are going to be the ones that are digging into where we have issues, right? All right. So we have I I important numbers on a dashboard, you know, yep. quick at a glance decision making, most important stuff. We have actionable insights. So somehow she needs to click and contact someone or click and get to a place where she can chat, ask questions, interact with people, not so interested in getting deep into all of the details, but maybe providing direction for somebody on, on her team who can. Um, what, so what have you learned about, you know, as, 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 as you're architecting a solution, and, you know, we, we get in the weeds, you know, we're down ingesting data and cleaning it, and modeling it and writing code. And, you know, we, we kind of get in this context of being down in the trenches. And then at some point, you know, in the life of that project, you're asked to spend a half hour with the CEO of a mid-sized company. You know, so what have you learned in that interaction? How do you, how do you uh, make the best use of that time and how do you best communicate with that kind of business user and find out what they need? Well, I, I, I think the key there is to speak as little as possible. You want to provide the information in, uh, I think I've called it, heard it like the elevator pitch, right? You've got 30 seconds to a minute to explain or, or go into the, that information and should be readily understandable at a glance when they look at it. But then you want to be open and listening to what they have to say in the direction that they're going to send you and the organization in from that interaction. Yeah, yeah, good right? point. I, I like the elevator pitch analogy. That's, that's very true. 30 seconds to a minute. I'll tell you, I, I learned a lesson on a project once, though. I, I was kind of prepped up by the, by the IT folks I was working with, came in as a consultant, and they say, you're going to build this dashboard. At, at the time, it was with SQL Server reporting services, but we were using KPIs and charts and things. And they say, you know, keep it simple, keep it focused, because it's all for the CEO. So I'm thinking, you know, don't, don't, don't tech out too much. 
and uh, keep it very simple. Then I sat with the CEO, and the first thing he said is, that's great. How do I analyze this in Excel? <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, man, I missed the mark because this guy came from an accounting background. And, right. You know, so you, you, you can't insult an executive's intelligence when you're designing something for them. You really need to know that audience. Well, and, and uh, I have to say, I really, really like the new Power BI and PowerPoint interaction and integration. So you mm -hmm. can find those high-level metrics and KPIs that you want to put in. You can add that into a PowerPoint. You can put in that narrative, that, um, uh, that enriching commentary that you have as a business unit or an ex subject matter expert. But then if that executive wants to go deeper into it and beyond just that PowerPoint slide that they're looking for, you know that it's going back to uh, ideally an enterprise data set that's been on a certified report, that's got certified, you know, it's got high data quality behind it, right? You don't want to be presenting things that are not, you know, really top tier that executive. Like, oh yeah, I guess we didn't refresh that last week, right? Like none of that stuff, right? I guess that's another box we need to check when we're thinking about, you know, uh, you know, executive users consuming reports is it's got to be high quality data. And that underscores shared data sets, certified data sets, you know, the, all of the data governance policies and, and culture that, 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 you know, produces high quality data. You know, that that's super important. So good, good point with that. Um, it, you know, and you talked about, you know, PowerPoint integration is awesome. So we, you know, get, we can get to uh, presentation level material that's still interactive, all mm -hmm. of Power BI. Another great integration is with Teams. Oh, you know, yeah. We, we, we've had annotations and comments and reports for years now, but the Teams integration is super cool because we can, you know, publish a report or, or surface a report within a Teams channel or within a chat, and then we can chat about it. We can say, hey, what do you think of this number? Hey, how come this one's off? So I, I, think, I think that that also can apply to that executive level user as well. Yeah, I, I, I agree wholeheartedly. In fact, um, I, although I, I, well, I, while I agree, I'm gonna actually challenge you and say, I like the Teams interaction for uh, the people who are a little lower in the chain, like the directors, and, and I think we're gonna get some other personas, I like the metrics interaction and the metrics visual. So that executive, when he's looking at a metric, he can see the commentary that his directors have put on the metric so that they can understand what the root cause is of that metric or what's going on with that metric. And that can all be done right inside of a Power BI report now. So you don't have to go any further. It's, it's not necessarily a conversation back and forth, right? It's just, hey, sales is down. Why the heck is that? Oh, Tom put a me message in. Root causes uh, the hurricane in Florida uh, has, has caused a, a dip in our number one client. Okay, makes yeah. perfect sense. I don't need any more information. Like uh, I'm... We'll continue on. We'll find some other way to resolve it, right? Well, let, so let's let's go down to that next level then. Yeah, so we, let's. We, we yeah. Have, so we we have this group of users, and uh, I, I think we're gonna we're gonna pick on Dan, the director. Ooh. All right. So, good. So a level or two below the the Ellen, the executive, we've got Dan, and you know where Ellen was really focused on the entire organization you know all of the the, the sub organizations all of the departments Dan's pretty focused on his thing whatever his thing is you know yeah. he might be the sales director or the marketing director or the you know over manufacturing um, but but that's Dan's focus because that's what he's held accountable for and he's got to answer for those numbers you know, yep. thus the conversation that we've had with with Ellen. Uh, hey, where did this number come from? Why is it lower than expected? How are we trending? What? So, what else is Dan interested in? Uh, great question. I think Dan is really interested in the people in his organization, right? So he's interested in reporting up to Ellen. He's got a. He's you know, Ellen holds Dan accountable, so that's a big driver for him. But 
Dan being a good leader is really focused in on the people that work for him and making sure that they're succeeding. Uh, if they're having challenges or issues, he's there to help them out, um, you know, and address any challenges. So I think he's he's very focused on that and focused on the performance of the people that's in their organization, right? You know, so he can okay. dig into what's going on in the people and 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 products or service offerings or or you know his sphere of influence. So is Dan typically going to be a highly technical person who's interested in doing a lot of uh, you know importing and mashups on his own? Do you think? Well, I think that like to your point, you know, it kind of depends on the individual. But most of the time, the Dans are going to have uh, the Dans of the world. They're going to have so much stuff going on. They're not necessarily going to, you know, they're going to be engaged in so many, you know, executive level issues and items and firefighting. They're not going to be doing a ton of that for themselves. In fact, right. you know, the the Dans of the world are going to be the ones who actually have those analysts who Ellen says do something. They're going to be the one. They're going to actually be reporting into Dan, you know, and right. and doing that work. So Dan Dan's too has people. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. So. Uh, but but he's 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 held accountable yeah. by Ellen, and so he's going to be concerned with the performance of his team mm -hmm. in his organization, and some very specific accountability about that. So he may have forecast numbers and plan numbers and targets that that he needs to measure against at a lower level of grain, right? Uh, you know, below that 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 high level organization dashboard that Ellen spends her time looking at. So I, I think I think that those you know that style of reporting is is still appropriate for Dan KPIs maybe some trends um, departmental summaries as as you decompose that organization might be interested in a little more detail so maybe drill down reporting across different levels of a hierarchy whether mm -hmm. it's in the organization or you know at the the you know fiscal year late level down to the quarter down to the fiscal period you know down to the month etc um so well, what 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 about data we've already established that dan's probably not highly technical and doing his own self-service mashup so much but but how about the data quality or i'm sorry the data, data governance question well i i think dan's could be using a lot of content that comes from those enterprise data sets right those are those are going to be the 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 thing that Ellen's looking at, the thing that the VPs, um, uh, and the thing that his peers are going to be looking at, you know, the other Dans that are out there, you know, working at that director level and engaging stuff. But Dan's probably also, because he's got analysts, he's going to have some departmental level data sets, right? And, you know, that are they're going to be really honed in and specific to what's going on in his business. So, He's, he's going to have some variation that he's going to have to deal with, and he's going to have to be able to manage that inside of his space as well. Although data quality and, and those things are still important, you, you know, they're not necessarily always going to rise to that same degree as that enterprise data set. Yeah. You know, so you reminded me of a, of a project that I worked on a few years back. It was for a large manufacturing company. And uh, we, we had this, uh, it was a diversity dashboard. It had to do with hiring practices and setting targets around, you know, making sure that various groups were represented. And uh, I worked on the same and, project. Oh, did we? Yeah. Good. Well, yeah. you know, I, 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 I think we've worked on a lot of the same kinds of projects. You know, we've compared notes, you know, quite a bit. But, but you know, as, as, as you, you, you got down from the executive down into the directors and the senior managers, they not only wanted to see what their performance was, but they mm. also wanted to see the performance of their peers. Yeah. You know, so yep. am I meeting my my targets? And by the way, how am I comparing, you know, to the people that I'm measured against? Right. So that's also an important metric. It might be in aggregate, or maybe it's in detail. But you know, you like it's not just about my world all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean that 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 is that is dead on, right? Like it's like horses in a race, right? Like you know, you, you're constantly kind of like keeping those eyes on the periphery right seeing how those metrics are doing and stuff so yeah that that's that's great and um uh yeah but i i think they're still very focused in on like high quality content and making stuff look good because i think they have to present the stuff 
often, even if it's not to Alan, it's to other directors, it's to other people across the company. It might be even be to customers and uh, showcasing the results of the department or highlighting how the quality of their products, right? Yeah, good, good point. So you mentioned presentation. This, this gets me thinking a little bit. So our, our, as we continue to explore, I think we're going to talk about the people you know, yep. who, who are who are doing the technical work, maybe, you know, at an analyst level or even down into IT developers. But, you know, um, presentation's important and, mm -hmm. you know, branding and theming and, you know, those are all important things to a point. And the way that you visualize and, and represent data is is super important. Something that I've, I've always kind of been mindful of in our space is, BI being the intersection of technology and business. Mm -hmm. Well, business people, uh, well, a as we present information, that is very much a, a right-brained activity. You know, there's a lot of creativity involved in in matching colors and using visuals and you know storytelling. Yet a lot of the technical stuff that we do, working with databases and curating data, that's a very left-brained activity. You know, 100 percent yeah you know connecting the dots working through a process you know doing a lot of repeatable and automatable things so i'm i'm thinking that the 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 report styles that are going to resonate with ellen and and with dan at a very high level in the company color selection visual uh you know styling theming that's super important and those are the things that the right brain people are good at not so much the left brain people of the world right so we need to get those people working together to deliver that kind of rich content well i i agree and i, I think that that's the that's that's the beauty of bi right is it brings these worlds together and you know like it kind of insists on 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 pressing back on them right and uh personally i i really like that in Power BI, you can go super deep in creating a theme to really spell out like n number of details on any visual yeah, that's in the service. Maybe, so sometimes maybe too deep. You know, it can be a bit of a distraction if yeah. you don't kind of balance all the priorities. But yeah, to your point, I, I, I absolutely agree. Right, because I mean, if you have that left brain person like you're talking about, doing a quick analysis, needing to present to that director, He's got a some valuable insights that need to be conveyed to someone who needs to see something visually appealing. Well, you have somebody who's a left brain analyst or a left brain IT developer. They don't even think about that. A theme allows them to at least get to like step one or base one so that that presentation can at least be possibly heard by that executive, right? Right, right. yeah. Make it pretty. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, ap ap apply my corporate, you know, branding colors, put the logo up in the header, you know, provide a little bit of visual separation. Those are not hard things to do, but they don't come naturally to the, the you know, the analytical people of the world. Well, and, and, and actually, that, that's a great lead in to Alice, the analyst. Alice, the analyst. All right. Let's talk about Alice. Yes, let's. All right. So what does Alice need to do? Alice needs to dig in. Alice yeah. needs to go deep. Yep. Uh, um, uh, like, where, where does Alice come from? What's her background? Well, so Alice can come from IT. Alice can come from the business. But r regardless of where Alice comes comes from, she's going to be deep into R, Python. Uh, she's going to have all sorts of like scripting and analytical capabilities. She'll use Tableau, Power BI, whatever tool is at her disposal. Mm -hmm. Alice is going to jump in and dig in and use it, right? Because she's all about solving that difficult question with data. Yep, yep, to totally agree. And uh, you know, I, and, and she's 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 the people you know who yep. are delegated to. Uh, you know, as 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 Ellen or the Dan's of the world, they're saying, Ellen, go find the root cause. Okay, this number's off. It says that we're trending down. We're missing our target. Why? Why is that happening? So first of all, figure out if that's good quality data that we can rely on so we can make a business decision because ultimately those numbers are going to drive important business decisions, hiring, firing, investing, important stuff. And we better make sure that those numbers, uh, you know, can drive those decisions.
Right, right. Alice is going to be the one who's who has to dig in, do that root cause analysis, as as you're saying. Um, Alice is going to also have to go out and just find data, right? Like, go out to the internet and and power query everything, right? Um, she's going to be mashing up crazy data from all over the place, trying to answer that question. And uh, I, I think that's where Alice is going to uh, not necessarily hate enterprise data sets, but probably fight against them at every turn because she needs to do yeah. her own thing. Because if the question could be answered by an enterprise data set, you probably don't need Alice, right? Um, right. Okay. So we we I think we've exposed a paradox here. Then, <laughs> so you know we we we've said that 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 Ellen and Dan both need to work with curated high quality data. Yep. All right. Well, where does curated high quality data come from? What does it take to deliver a certified data set? Well, you've got you you know you you might have a a whole data lake or data warehouse architecture where developers have worked for months or years to pump this data through their raw and bronze and silver and gold layers and their ETL pipelines. And, you know, so that data, that takes a long time to deliver these solutions and get it all in a reliable data warehouse where our you know, our, 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 our data stewards, you know, can look at that data and say, yeah, okay, that's high quality. I, I sign off on that. I believe that that's the master product list. And I believe that, that all of these sales records are right. And then along comes Alice. Now, I think this is a line from a song, but uh, along comes Alice and says, yeah, that's all good that it took you, you know, six to 12 months to create this curated data set. But I need to go quickly grab this data off of a website. Well, now these two worlds collide. I've, I've got the super governed data, and I've got this stuff that I've got to, to get in front of Ellen today. So how, how does Alice do that? What tools can she use to maintain governance and to be able to quickly mash up data? Well, I, I think that's where we start to talk about the possibility of either like a composite model or mm -hmm. Ellen using uh, curated approved data flows and approved measures to like build out her own custom model, right? So that she can all have that same information coming in from those enterprise sources. She can do those same joins, those same builds, uh, build out her own model to answer that question, or she could leverage that enterprise model, mash something up against that and, and deliver on results, right? Yeah, yeah, boy, composite models are so powerful. You're raising the bar, you know. It's it's not something you do overnight, but right. uh, you know, just the ability to to be able to entertain both sides of the world. You know, the the, the governed, curated, signed off, you know, data sets with added tables that may not necessarily be fully trusted, but it it allows business leaders to make quick decisions. Well, and I think this oh. is also where like Alice starts to go in and write her own custom queries. And that could be a custom query back to some Databrick notebooks that could be up up against SQL Server that could even be into the new Power BI Data Mart, right? Because she's trying to yep. answer some very specific root cause questions that maybe don't necessarily fit into any of the data models that may exist today, right? Like hey, look at the cohorts of people who purchase products on the thirds of every month and tell us if there's a default rate that's unusually high within the, those cohorts. Uh, yeah. I'm going to tell you, you can write a query to do that. You can't write, you know, it's very difficult to write a model to give you that stuff inside of Power BI, right? So that, that that's the perfect type of thing for Alice to get in and have to go do, right? She's doing that quickly to try to get to those quick insights. You know, there, there's going to be some question about the reliability and the quality of that data. And I'll tell you, we could we could do multiple sessions on data governance, yeah. and you know, balancing the scales between trying to get it right and perfect, and and it being good enough to enable business leaders to to be able to take action. Sure. But we've got we've got tools to balance the scales. It just takes a little orchestration. Yep. Yep. Uh, so, um, what, what, uh, so, so what, what's Alice delivering? So what, what, is, what is it that she's creating? Is she creating these high fidelity reports? 
uh, you know, the pixel perfect reports or the KPIs or a, a data model or everything oh, so above? Alice might be, you know, that that's within the realm of what Alice might be doing. But she could be also be building some real special purpose. Hey, this is an issue of today. It's something we need to address. Like, uh, for example, what's going on with our clients that are suffering with the hurricane losses, right? Where are they at? What's, what, what actions need to be taking around managing their accounts receivable, right? You know, that type of a report or information could be really a point in time piece of uh, analytics that uh, managers need to know. They need to take action and do something from. But it's something that we're not going to revisit on a monthly basis or come back to it, you know, year in and year out. So she might be building reports like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, 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 it's interesting when you look at the, the entire audience for Power BI, you know, I, I, I come from a, a very deep IT space. So I, you know, I grew up with, with SQL Server and reporting services and SSIS, SSAS, the whole stack. And, you know, so that, that's, that's my lens or been my lens for a long time. And, and when I, I, I started my BI journey, I realized that there are a lot of people out there with an appetite to use data who aren't hard code, hardcore coders. Right. And, you know, the, the, the Power BI audience, 80% of them are not techie. Yeah. They're, they're not yep. coders. Yep. They, they just need a tool that allows them to bring data together quickly. And it's not always to IT standards. So yep. again, it's a balancing act. You know, we, we said earlier that Alice has mad skills with all sorts of like tech. She might right. not. Alice may just know the business, right? Alice might just be really involved in everything that's going on and wants to look at what's what's happening and can can understand what, what what's going on. So maybe just importing uh an excel spreadsheet into autocrate and power bi uh, gives alice a whole world of insights uh, to do that an analysis of what's going on inside her business so yeah, that, yeah but I, I think i think an important point is that it's her job to go deep so yeah. she's got to go figure it out yes pick up yep. some good books yep. you know watch some reliable youtube videos you know watch <laughs> guy in maybe she's watching us you know i mean there's a lot of community Hi, Alice. Uh, you know, contributors out there. Hey, yeah, Alice, <laughs> if we can help you out. You know, let us know if you need some help. But uh, and that's one thing I just I love so much about about Power BI is the community, and there's just so many people who create great great content. But you know, you got to know who you can trust too. And you know, we've we've got a we've got a, a, a you know a, a short list of people who we trust in the community. And wait. There was this guy who put together the council of the data guys. Oh, we like, that's oh, right. You. Yeah. <laughs> so these are the people that you can trust with providing advice and, and you know, and best practices guidance. Uh, so anyway, Alice, pay attention to the you know council of the data gods. That's that's your go-to for best practices. All right, who's 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 next? Well, I I, uh, I think we would be remiss if we didn't hit like one of the, the biggest areas of every single company, and that's sales. Sal, the oh, sales God. guy. Sales. What's that? <laughs> I said, I guess somebody's got to sell the product. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Sal, the sales guy. So, uh, you know, I, I think that if you ask Sal what, what he needs, he's going to say something like, just show me the number. I don't care about the fancy chart. I don't care about the drill through interaction. That's all nice, you know, once I figure out how to use that stuff, but I just need the numbers. Uh, I, I was uh, told by a sales guy, uh, uh, you can go, you nerds can go back to your nerdery. Just give me what my commission <laughs> is, right? And, yes, and that's the most important number <laughs> is my commission. Yeah. Right. You're, you're right. Well, okay, so let's let's assume that Sal is 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 a sales manager. Okay, uh, uh, which means sure. that Sal has people. Yep. Uh, but but what 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 kind of people does does Sal really concern himself with? Well, I I think Sal is very concerned about the people that report to him, right? That mm -hmm. you know, um. And he's he's going to put a huge influence on 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 two real groups of people. One, his rock stars, right? You know, the was it the top twenty percent produce eighty percent of your you know. There's like a principle around that, right? Um, 
uh um you know so those guys he, he's really focusing on making sure that they're happy that they're executing that nothing is going astray with them and that they're focused and delivering but Sal is also very focused in on new people who have come on board, right? The sales, sales teams always have a degree of churn. There's always new people entering into the sales, sales area. And sales is, you know, we, we joke, but sales is freaking hard. I mean, it is really, really hard to be a good salesperson. Getting a, a salesperson from, hey, you're brand new to, oh, you're a rock star is very difficult and challenging. So I think those those sales managers are inter very interested in those two groups of people um a little bit of bad news for you if you happen to be outside those groups eh, not so much there so um <laughs> well one, one reason that sales is hard is i mean sales is competitive yeah you know and so the i i, I think you know having having worked with a lot of sales people in in uh in my career, you know, salespeople <sighs> tend to be very competitive, but that's how you incent salespeople. 100%. So in a report, you know, the, the one of the big questions is not only how I'm doing, is, is how am I ranking? Mm, yep. And, you know, am I beating the other people? Yep. You know, are we and by how much? <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. right. And, you know, and, and, you know, if at the end of the month, you know, our team is better than everybody else, then we, you know, we got to, you know, get to go out to Ruth's Chris and have a steak or... Yeah, you know, yep. uh, the, the, there's always a carrot at the end. Well, a steak, you know. They, they <laughs> but, well, yeah, but that's, yeah, those are the things that I think salespeople generally really care about. One thing I really like to give to sales managers, and, and it's in the mind, or the idea is how do you coach and help people that may be struggling in an area, right? And I, I always think of it as tops and bottom reports. So you want to know who's who's leading up, also who's who's not who's at who who maybe is at the bottom of the chain and then how can you potentially partner those those two up so like you take you know uh, rachel the rock star salesperson and you connect him to chris the schlub right and say rachel sh sh show chris how you sell this stuff right and then chris goes off and and learns from rachel and hopefully you, you know they they gain from you know that that that, that the Chris the schlub learns you know from from Rachel and so I, I think those types of an analytics are something that's very useful for a sales uh, a sales manager to be able to help his team grow coach and and help them get to that next level right yeah I think they also need to be able to take action All right. um, you know it typically and you know especially in larger organizations sales is typically driven by some kind of a customer relationship management mm. tool yep. And, you know, and, and there's a process there. It's a really well-defined process. You've got, you've got this, this opportunity pipeline. You've got the sales funnel. Yep. And, you know, and so, you, one, we need to find opportunities. So it's yep. not just about selling products to customers, but it's finding new customers. So, you know, where are the opportunities? How do you qualify those opportunities? What's the likelihood of, of an opportunity or a contact turning into a sale? And, you know, and so that data may be coming out of, you know, Salesforce or, you know, dynamic CRM or some mm -hmm. other tool that produces that style of data. And then how do we visualize that in a way where we can see what our pipeline looks like? Is it rich? And then how do I drill down into the pipeline and see, you know, how many potential customers do I have at level three within the seven level pipeline? And, you know, I, I want to click and contact that customer. So I need, I, I need, you know, contact information. I need email addresses. I, I need interfaces with other systems. So I, when I click, I can make the phone ring or click and send an email, follow up in some way. Well, agreed. And also, what are the big deals that I have in my pipeline that maybe they're at risk, right? Maybe they're past due. Maybe they've had an unusual spike in customer service P1 tickets. That they're you know that they're struggling to get closed and and they're just sitting open right those types of things can cause some real back and forth and problems in closing deals maybe they want to know about those so that when when something like that happens they can take action even internally to reach out to customer service to say hey you know uh, you know client xyz is struggling with 15 open p1 tickets what do we got going on here can we do anything to help them can we get a special project manager to to bring these all together and work these through to make sure that they get resolved in a timely fashion 
right? There's all sorts of opportunities for, for salespeople to be able to be proactive and engaging with their customers if we enable it through our analytics. Right. Okay. Well, so let's so let's talk about the people who manage those those help desk tickets and the customer service calls. Well, you mean so, Hillary? Yeah, yeah, Hillary, the Hillary, the help desk manager. Oh, Hillary's so, so awesome, right? <laughs> she, she does well. She puts out fires. Well, she, and, and you know, and she 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 fixes my computer so it doesn't blue screen. Yeah. So, I love Hillary. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Hillary's so, always got her eye on all the stuff that's going on, right? She's got, she's, she is driven by analytics and she's got big dashboards up over her, her help desk. So she, so she could see at a glance how many right. big tickets are open. What's the time on them? So, so Sal probably lives here. Yeah. Most of the time or on yep. the laptop because he's, he's out traveling and, you know, doing calls with customers. But but Hillary, you're right. Is 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 actually in the help center, and she's got big monitors, and I, I think that's more about real time analytics or near real time analytics. Yep. So you know what 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 are, what does my ticket queue look like? You know right. how how do those tickets rank? You know as you said, what are the priority one tickets, and you know are my people handling those, and how long does it take to close a ticket and move to the next one? so that we can support Sal and the rest of the people who, you know, need system support. You, you know, I've, Hillary? I, I've always thought Hillary needed the new, um, uh, what's the VR, Power BI, oh, like yeah, geotagging like, stuff. So she could, right. so right. she could the look out. Lens integration. Yeah. Which, yeah. Where you can, uh, hey, there's a report. Let's take it. And well, but you could it. see over each of her help desk cubes, you know, each of the cubes, like, What's the status? Where are they where are they going on? So she could get a visual layout of like, hey, what's the degree of severity each of the tickets are, right? So if it's a if like she's got a field of green and everything is good, hey, it's not a big deal. One or two reds, she can go over talk, provide assistance, help them out. But if she looks up and she sees a field where everyone is on the phone and everyone has a red service flag on she knows that it's time for that war room, right? Like, okay, right, right. there's a big so, issue. We gotta start getting people together on this, right? So I, I've got I've got this image in my head now of, of Hillary wandering around the help center wearing a HoloLens and she's tripping over cables and, and you know. No, so, you do it with this, the- In this surreal virtual environment. Well, you do it with the, with the new phone thing that they got that's coming yeah, out. Yeah, we're, Yep, you're right. That's yeah, you, you're right. Uh, uh, and we saw that just just it was like a month ago or so. Right. Uh, you know, you don't have the you don't have to have the Hololens. You can have the whole VR experience. Just yeah. So phone. she can just do a little like yeah. quick little pan. Everything's all right. Okay, good to go. Right. <laughs> <sighs> all right. So so but but you're right. So so you know the war room analytics. You know who's handling calls. What are they handling? Who needs help? You know mm -hmm. because. Uh, you know, if somebody's you know on a on a support call with uh, with the CEO and that's super high priority, right? Then uh, you know maybe we need to escalate that or have someone come over and look over that person's shoulder so that we can you know team solve a troubleshoot a problem. Um, so um, these people are all about taking action quickly. So how do how do what what type of reporting experience? Uh, allows our help desk people to be able to take action and move things along very quickly. I think we're talking Probably about... Probably not about trending over the past six months. It's about what's going on now. Yeah, they're really interested in, like, uh, KPIs. Um, uh, I mean, there might be some bars, but, they, you know, and a lot of the help desk people want, might be technical in some areas, but they're not necessarily technical in analytics, right? So things we can do to tell them a story about what's going on and, you know, like using the natural language generation so that they can understand at a glance w w what the status is, but then also have that ability to link directly into the variety of systems that you have, right? Like, so from within your analytics, be able to go out to your CRM or your Salesforce or go out to your network or go out to these other areas 
or right. inversely integration integration is key yeah 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 exactly Integra integration is key so inversely if you can embed the analytics in the various other areas right then th they they benefit from that as well right but generally speaking they're a command center you know based people right they're uh what they're nasa their command control to help yeah, take care control. of these issues right um, yeah, yeah. And, you know, Power BI uh, affords so many opportunities to integrate. I mean, we can integrate other products within Power BI. You know, we, we've, we've got, you know, a Power Apps integration. We've got paginated reports integration. Yep. You know, you've got, you've got Power Automate. I was going to call it Flows. Um, you know, but, but then Power BI itself can also be embedded and integrated pretty easily, you know, both through the Power BI uh, uh, embedding service, but I mean, you can plug a Power BI report into a frame and pass parameters into it in a, right. you know, a, a less secure environment. So yeah, there's a lot of opportunities to do that, but you're right. That's, that's the kind of experience that our help desk people need to have with, with Power BI. Well, now we've been um, getting pretty specific, right? We went to, you know, uh, we went deep into Sal, the sales guy and Alice, the analyst and, Hillary, the help desk manager. What about just generic, um, old, uh, plain Jane, Mark the manager, right? So if we want to have like a big bucket, right? You know, Mark's pretty, you know, khakis and blue polo and, you know, you know he, he's, he's pretty, you know, standard. <clears throat> what is it that Mark's looking for? Well, Mark, I think Mark's really, really focused on his team. Um, I don't, I don't think Mark, Mark cares so much about the organization dashboard and the, you know, the actuals versus forecast. I mean, those things might be dictated down to his team at a very micro level, but I think Mark's responsible for a dozen people and he needs to know what their concerns are, what their performance looks like. And, and that might boil down to, you know, just a weekly basis. You know, what yep. what are we working on this week? What's our what, what's our backlog? What tasks do we have? Prioritization of those tasks. What's the status? Uh, you know, what are my people completing? You know, whatever that is, because Mark could be managing anything that you know we can imagine. So is Mark so, very uh, technical? Probably, probably not so much. I'm thinking most managers that I've worked with may have some tech skills, but. You know, they might live in a spreadsheet, but I think most of the reports that they use are, you know, a report that was created for them. Sure, sure. Um, but they don't necessarily have access to analysts. So if they have a question that's not in a report, they're kind of, they can be kind of up a creek, right? Like they have to submit requests yeah. into like that central team, or they have to try to get the attention of Dan, the director to say, hey, Dan, I need an analyst to help me understand this stuff or what else can we do for Mark, the manager to help him, uh, answer a question. If, if he, you know, he wants to go deeper into like what's going on inside of his space. Right. Oh, okay. What, so when I mentioned spreadsheets, you, you touched your nose. So I think we agree on that point that, that, you know, people in the trenches in business tend to live in Excel. And, you know, as I've sat down with managers, uh, you know, and say, hey, I've created this great report for you, and here's all your people and their performance and their trend and everything. And, uh, you know, the, the natural question is great. How do I export that to Excel? Yeah. And, you know, and, and, you know, one, give the people what they want, but two, show them a better way. And if, if mm -hmm. the right answer is exporting or integrating with Excel, great. But there are more efficient ways to use curated data sets, certified data, you know, governed data, than to create another data silo and dump a file into your desktop. So maybe we want to show, show Mark how to use Analyze in Excel or to use Power BI in, in, you know, with a tool that they already know how to use, that sure. they know and love. Yep. But in, in the end, there might be some exporting involved. Well, sure, and they might be doing some exporting, but maybe they're they're using a power and a certified enterprise data set that they're analyzing Excel, and they're in they're exporting it out, and they're doing their own mashup, right? Like they watched that YouTube right. video on VLOOKUP, 
15 times now and it almost works exactly the way they think it should and oh, but, but let me show you a left turn left join merge in power query and blow your mind yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and they're starting down that journey, and, and and rightfully so, right? They've got that inquisitive mind. They've got to go find this stuff, and 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 Mark, while he's you know we're we're kind of caricature, caricaturing him as like plain Jane, he's not right. Like Mark's a, a go getter, and he's trying to manage his team, and he's going out there and doing what you know needs to be done for them, and so he'll try those things out, and he'll watch that V lookup video fifteen times to make sure that he's doing it right right and you know i i think that that's a big deal right because ultimately mark's gonna put that together and he's gonna present that up to the dance and say hey i've noticed this inside of our business and i think that this is an issue and i think we should take the following actions right and he's gonna prepare that presentation and 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 dan's gonna rightfully think about it he's gonna be you know be He's going to uh, push back, right? He's going to challenge Mark on his assumption. He's going to challenge Mark on the data to make sure Mark did his due diligence and, and did things reasonably correct. Um, but that that's going to be a big thing that Mark is going to maybe not do all the time, but do from time to time. Sure. And I think even more so as, as, as our friends at Microsoft continue to make tools like Power BI more accessible and easier mm -hmm. to use for the marks of the world, you know, less technical audience, no code, low code, you know, create content in the browser, don't have to worry about installing a bunch of complex software. People like Mark are going to be doing more and more of their own data curation, matchup and visualization. Now, and I think I think this is a key point that if we look at the, the data sets and the reports created for Ellen and for Dan and people in that category, that stuff is gonna belong in in a workspace that's protected. We've got role level security and mm -hmm. it might be published as an app. Maybe we're using deployment pipelines to implement a CI C D pipeline to make sure that's all delivered correctly because you know hirings and firings are going on based on that data. But if Mark is mashing up his own data and creating his own simple reports, he needs a workspace, a sandbox to put that in that he can share with his team. And we know that that may not be perfect data, but enables them to do their jobs. Well, and I, I think that's a big deal, right? Like understanding that it's okay to have a workspace that's not certified and it's not got a whole bunch of like curated content in there. It's just a space for people to do work, share information back and forth. And we don't necessarily have to get data governance involved in this, right? Like it, there- it, it, Data governance, I, I, I agree with you to a point, but I think the data governance is, is an iterative process where if, if, you know, Mark goes and imports a bunch of data from who knows where and mashes it up and maybe he doesn't get all the relationships right and the calculations aren't perfect, it works under some conditions and maybe not under others, that's great. So he solved 90% of the problem, but there's a question of, of long-term reliability. But, but Mark knows his business and he was able to solve his business problem. So if our data governance process includes reviewing that data set and those reports and realizing, well, that eventually needs to be an enterprise report. And that feedback loop allows our IT developers to go create something that's scalable and reliable and can be fully governed. Mark's part of the process now. He's yep. not just this loose cannon who went and created some unsupported report. Well, that, yeah, that's a fantastic point about the entire Power BI ecosystem from M to the tabular engine to power bi all of these things are enterprise scale solutions that someone day one with power bi could start to build and it could evolve all the way through that process and become that enterprise based solution that 100 percent spot on yeah. right um can't, can't can't evolve a lot of it right. a lot of it's junk that you want to throw away and learn from but you're right you know it has to go through the refiner's fire. right and i guess i want a quick hit on the and you called it junk and I, I i call it like a momentary ray of sunshine okay uh okay, there so we go. you Glass get half full. this is why i love you chris <laughs> <laughs> so but I, I use this 
like four times last week. I was blown away by it. Got someone sent me a spreadsheet in the mail. They were talking about the stuff that was going on in it. Never seen the spreadsheet before. I don't know any of the, these things at all. What the heck am I supposed to make of this? I'm trying to like read this long, like 15 page email. Like, oh my God. Okay. I copied that data out of the Excel spreadsheet, paste into the Power BI auto create, and boom, I had a report that was auto generated. And while some of it didn't make any sense, like a whole bunch of it did make sense and allowed me to really quickly grasp what topics were being used. I think Mark is going to find the Power BI auto create a godsend when it comes to him doing his own analytics and building out content. And frankly, uh, if uh, I'm sad that I don't hear more people talking about the new auto create thing because it just blows me away every time I interact with it. Um, it's fantastic. I, well, I think, I, and I think that there are a lot of, of features within the tool that, that kind of fit into that category that, that make it super easy for less technical users to get insights and make decisions. And it may not necessarily be something that, that is going to be put into production for the entire company, and it might produce some, some questionable answers. Ray of cases. sunshine. Ray of sunshine. Okay. <laughs> say, I'll say it with you. Let's do it again. One, two, three. Ray, Ray of, of sunshine. sunshine. <laughs> All right. All right. Something. So, so we went less technical. Now let's go... Yes highly detailed highly yeah. dialed in yeah all right let's you know who i'm talking Arlene. about right uh yep yep let's talk about arlene oh i oh, love yeah. arlene Ar yeah yeah arlene is in accounting right and arlene knows everything about every gl in the organization right yeah, arlene a lot more than we will ever know Right. And we will be reminded of that when we work with that data with Arlene. Yeah. <laughs> Arlene didn't come by this knowledge easy, right? Arlene right. worked her butt off for decades, right? To get this degree of knowledge uh, and the details going on inside our organization, right? Arlene is in. But Arlene, what tool does Arlene want, like, a really nice, like, pretty power bi report well yeah well so so what 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 happens when you you take this data you know in a vacuum you've got this data with some you know our our business systems analyst met with arlene for 30 <laughs> minutes and wrote up a requirement document and so that gets thrown over the wall to some power bi developer who you know is really good at visualization comes up with a scatter plot and a ribbon chart and heaven forbid a pie chart and uh, puts that in front of Arlene. What's she gonna do? Right, <laughs> right. Uh, she, no. she's she gonna wants to see the numbers. She right. wants to see the numbers, and she wants to see them. And say it with me. Excel. Excel. Right. Right. Yep. Yep. She, yeah. She, she lives in spreadsheet land, and and you know she's all about balancing the numbers to the penny. Hundred percent. And, and yep. uh, Arlene has been doing V lookups since uh, th they were like a lookups because you know she's been with them the whole life cycle right she knows the cross lookups what's the new one x lookup like she was right right yeah i i i, I interviewed um uh oz du soleil okay uh, have you seen his videos yes oz, oh oz, oz, oz is a data god all right oz is the, oz is the bomb yeah yeah uh, but but yeah i mean he he did a whole series on on the the newer and i and i don't remember it's the new replacement for v lookup which is pretty cool yeah. But again, I'm, I'm left out or join merge in Power Query. <laughs> <laughs> but as long as it returns. Right. Arlene, wants, Arlene wants to do it herself. Yes. Um, so, you know, Ar Arlene's, you know, old dog. It, it's hard to teach new tricks. So I think that if, if, if we're on the hook for delivering a reporting experience for Arlene, um, one, embrace the spreadsheet. You know, mm -hmm. uh, let's let's make it work with Analyze and Excel. Make it, and, and and if if we're not using Excel, we need to make it very Excel like. Yep. So that user typically wants to see data in a matrix or a table, and you know you you can embellish 
those tabular style of visuals with things like data bars and you know and and you know KPI indicators and things like that. But in the end, it's all about the numbers. Yeah, and I think Arlene is the perfect use case for like additional add-on tools like Info River or Power on BI that brings that Excel feel right into your Power BI experience, right? So it's not just kind of like Excel, but she exports it into Excel. But you know, if you wanna get her that step away from Excel and into the platform, I think both of those tools provide an, an experience that allows Arlene that safety to move off of Excel and into something more modern. And I, I, I think that this makes the point that part of the vision of Power BI, I mean, Microsoft had delivered a fantastic product and, and it works great when you just, you know, download, install Power BI desktop, do your matchups and visualize using stock visuals, but it's extensible. Yeah. And so there there are there are custom visuals that vendors like InfoRever and and Power On have created. If you want to do right back, you want to have a uh, you know a, a a paginated like experience within uh, within a Power BI report or an Excel like experience. InfoRiver is a great tool for that, and it just highlights the extensibility of the entire platform. So sometimes it makes sense to use uh, you know a vendor supported addition to the product. Yeah, I I completely agree because you know while Arlene is um, she is in her old world because she has. Uh, I, I think it's because she has 40 years or whatever it is of experience in handling infinite numbers of crazy situations. And Excel is a tool that, that allows her to handle all of those crazy things. She goes into Power BI or some of these new tools. Well, it doesn't have this one function that she uses in these you know, crazy accounting situations, right? That are always end a quarter, end a year, right? Where the pressure is on to deliver and Arlene always delivers, right? So Excel helps, you know, if we have a solution that allows for that data to easily integrate and be in Excel, that's great. If we can extend a Power BI with, with InfoRiver or Power On, you know, that that's a, a great stepping stone. So that's, that's great. Cause the reality is Arlene just wants one big flat table. And if, if all data was in one big flat table, what more would you need, right? In, 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 in her world, that's what data looks like. It's one great big flat table. And, you know, Power BI is not always real happy, at least, you know, <laughs> as a data source, and consuming one big flat table. I'll tell you, uh, an experience that I've had with, with multiple Arleans in my career is, you know, you, you show them how to use Analyze in Excel. And, you know, that by default creates a pivot table with a live connection to a published data set. And that's great, but you, you put a pivot table in front of an accountant and they're gonna go, oh, a pivot table, that's not how I see numbers. And uh, let me show you this trick. You choose the pivot table, go, go up to OLAP tools, convert that pivot table to a bunch of cells with individual uh, you know, MDX functions, what, what are they called? The, the, uh, they're, 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 they're Excel functions that individually consume, um, you know, a, oh, the, a, a live query. The, yeah. the, the, the but, crash my model Excel file? Yeah, I, I know well, that one. Yeah, you've got, got 10,000 <laughs> rows and, you know, and, and 900 columns, sure. But now you've got a spreadsheet. It's yes. not a pivot table, but yes. it does all the magic of a pivot table, but if you want to insert a couple of blank rows and insert some placeholder columns, you can do all of that by raising the bar with built-in Excel features yep. that integrate with Power BI. The two work so well together. Yeah, and and that's what's amazing about this ecosystem is how well all of these tools play together, right? Like, yeah, you know, cube, you're... cube functions, cube functions. That's what I was trying to think of. They're called cube functions. They <laughs> okay. go way back to. The MDX. All right. Oh, okay. So, the, all right. Who's who's who? So, so who have we left out here? So we we've covered the accountant. We've covered the manager. We've got you know the help desk. We 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 talked about the analyst, the director, all the way up to the executive. So who's who's left in this company? Who well, who, who might be really important? Well, uh, I think it's going to be those uh, Frank, the frontline worker, right? That guy who's out in front meeting with the customers, 
dealing with the uh, you know service calls you know uh, this could be pulling the levers on the machine making the widgets right 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 that that those people, those people use data too yeah yep uh and uh, i think you know that data is going to be much more functionally oriented right so if a guy pulling the lever on uh, on a machine is going to be very interested in in the status of that machine right like what's going on what are where what's the what parts are wearing? What parts need to be replaced? What's his output levels? Is he me made me making the minimum output levels that are you know re he's responsible for producing? Right. Um, so, so I think you know Frank working on the front line, he's probably accustomed to working with a few different systems, and there, there might be a primary system that is used to drive whatever their process is. I'm thinking, you know, I spent some time in pulp and paper and. You know, ma making pulp, there's a recipe system. So you go to this application, and, and it says, okay, we're making this today, and how, I need to start the machine, and I need to control all of these inputs. And I, I think what, what Frank doesn't want to do is think, oh, well, I, I need to go run a report. So I'm going to go over here to this other portal and go to, you know, powerbi.com and sign in and go fish for this report and run it. So I, I think that Frank would really like to see that report that he needs to do his job right there inside his system. So Hallelujah. Preach on, report. Paul Turley. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, Frank, the frontline workers. The Blues Brothers clip right there. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think I, 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 I'm, I'm seeing James Brown. I'm on the podium. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but... You know, you're right. You know, he's there. Frank is going to be in a in a system in a machine, right? Like, because Frank could also be a front te a teller at a bank, right? So he's 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 interacting with clients as they come in. He's going to want to know um, some very high level metrics embedded inside that that teller system, right? Like, how many times in the last ninety days has that person bounced a check, or uh, have they? Um, if they ask for a fee to be waived, right? Or, or whatever it happens to be, what are those key metrics that they're looking for when people are coming in? Uh, you know, that can really help Frank out in delivering an excellent customer experience. Because, you know, if someone comes in and they haven't, you know, maybe they've never bounced a check or maybe they've never asked for a fee to be waived. And they ask Frank, hey, something happened. I got hit with a $35 fee. Can you reverse it? Well, why not empower Frank to be able to see from the analytics that this is a good, high-quality customer that's not doing that? Mm -hmm. Instead of having to go get a manager and waste that customer's time, empower Frank to, like, hey, th they got that gold little light on their, their customer rating. You know, go ahead, or green light or whatever you want, right? Um, go ahead, wave that fee for that customer, help them out, because... Yeah, we're we are all here to help the customer at the end of the day, and that's you know what what Frank's job is doing, right? And if, and if if Frank in this role, I mean, look, let's look let's look at the the, the other side of that. So we got a customer who says, hey, you know, can you wave this? And 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 they look at the embedded report and go, you know what, this is the the seventeenth time you've asked for a fee to be waived this year. So no, I'm you know I'm again I'm making an informed decision based on good quality data. Well, and, and maybe you also leverage that to like make a recommendation like, hey, maybe they need a, a mortgage refinance or have you thought about a small business loan to help you bridge tough times or whatever it happens to be, right? Like some sure. sort of product to help that customer out, right? And I, I think regardless, what we're saying though is simplicity is key in providing analytics to any of our frontline workers, right? Well, and I, you know, I, I think I think that in 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 reporting like any other system design, you've got three key areas: form, fit, and function. Mm. All right. So, is is the report in the right form? So here yep. we're talking about an embedded report inside of an application. Let's say that we've got somebody working in shipping and receiving. So they've got you know semi trailers backing up to a dock, and they need a manifest. To be able to check things off, that might be on a tablet, so that the, the 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 that that form and the format of that report might need to be optimized for that device. Or, you know, I know old school idea here, printed on paper. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
still happens, you know, there, there are a lot of use cases in business today, less so than maybe 20 years ago, where reports need to be printed and you need to sign off on them. Well, the, there are lots of places in this world where electricity is not as reliable as it once was, right? You know, you, always being able to count on a computer screen and the internet is not necessarily always a thing. You know, if you if you have don't, don't, don't tell people that <laughs> well, supposed to promote the use of technology. Why not? But but to, <laughs> to your like, point, right? Yeah, like, absolutely. yeah, you know. Saying, you know what, this factory needs to make sure that we have printed printed printouts of every order that's going out in a day so that even if the Internet goes down or they have some connectivity or they have some issue with their computer system, they're still able to ship all of their products in a given day. That makes a ton of sense, right? Like, you know, the, not shipping for a day isn't an option, right? But. You know, the reality of the world is some places those things are not as reliable. And so having those printouts can be can can be important, right? So having those pixel perfect or reports that are designed to be printed are, are key, right? And, and and well and and this brings up a, a, a really important point, and that is that Power BI, as we think about Power BI, I mean, Power BI is a platform. It's it's a tool, it's a style of report, but it's also a platform. When we think about Power BI reports, we're usually thinking about these interactive reports that you view in one page without scrolling around on a screen. But sometimes we need reports and report experiences that are page size and multi-pages, and that's what paginated reports are all about, which, I mean, you know, I've written a few books on reporting services that used to be my jam and 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 that's now known as paginated reports and so there's a very good use case for those older style reports that are page size either optimized for exporting or optimized for printing or maybe you just need a list of stuff yep and that's that's a that's a good thing that the, the paginated reports are for and that's part of the platform it's yep. part of the power bi experience well, you can and, and drill through and navigate to them and embed them. Well, and and that is the amazing thing is is it is all part of our, our modern cloud platform. We're talking about technology that goes back 15, 15 years. Is patch or is well, SSRs older than that? Reporting services was released in February of two thousand four. Okay, it was in beta for a full year, or so. We could say 2003, so that's uh, that is 19 plus years ago. Yeah. So I, I mean, if you think about the the breadth of uh, work and maturity of that product, you know, the things you can do inside of Pagey Reports are are really impressive, and that integration, that those call to actions, that program programmability that you can add into Pagey Reports. Frankly, some of those areas, Power BI can't touch it yet. So um, uh, it, it's part of the solution that people, I think, often overlook. And that is the is often the solution that, that peop, a lot of people are, are missing. The other big one is you can drill from Power BI into a page report, and then the page report can execute a query back to your data warehouse or back to your other systems. And it's not trapped in the... the 10 gig or 25 gig or 50 gig limits that your Power BI service has, you can go query terabytes of data inside your patch sure. report and not not be constrained by that, right? Yeah, Power, Power BI needs a data model and and, yep. and, 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 and and usually the best shape for that model is going to be a star schema. Right. And, you know, when you get into detailed level transactional reporting, Oftentimes, you know, you you can you can drive some details from a data model, but sometimes it makes sense to step outside the data model and just go run a SQL query. Yep. Just go, just go fire off a, a stored proc or or select from a view with a where clause, and you can drill through from Power BI reports to a paginated report, pass some parameter values, and boom, you're you're not constrained by the data model, which was optimized for analytical reporting. Not so much for transactional reporting. Oh, preach so, on Paul. Um, I I I think we've 
we've covered all of our uh, all of our personas, unless unless you think we've missed anybody. Well, I don't know if I, we miss anyone. What about you, viewers? Do we miss yeah. anybody? Who do we miss? Leave the the and I want names that's using alliteration, right? So we had Mark the manager, Arlene the accountant, Frank the frontline worker, Hillary the help desk manager, Sal the sales guy, Alice the analyst, Dan the director, and Ellen the executive. I want to know who we That's missed. Uh, yeah, uh, we went up, down, around the food chain. I want to know who we missed. What what persona should people be thinking about in, inside their Power BI reports? And uh, I want alliteration in their names. So. Uh, Jim, the gym teacher, does that work? No, that's not alliteration, is it? What? John the janitor. John the janitor. That's a great the example. Janitor. Yep. Jana the janitor. Yeah. <laughs> so. So yes, but 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 post your questions, and um, we'll do this again, and we'll cover some other topics as well. But we want to make sure that we fully define the audience, and that you're thinking about beginning with the end in mind. Who are you delivering these reports for? Who are you creating solutions for? So that these people are enabled to make informed decisions. And then we'll back up and we'll talk about how to start crafting these, these solutions and uh, keeping, keeping our audience in mind. Chris, this has been fantastic. I, I really enjoyed this. Yeah, Look forward to it. Forward yeah, to this. this was great, Paul fantastic idea i'm so happy that we get to collaborate on this i knew we were brothers i knew we were power bi brothers <laughs> <laughs> all right well until then we'll look oh. forward to uh look forward to the comments and questions and uh we'll do it again yep thank you thanks everybody you guys have a great night thanks paul take care all right chris thank you